Hello everybody and welcome to our Fundamental Learning Series webinars. My name is David. I'll be your guide today through our third installment in this series, IP Phone Initial Setup. Finality supports multiple makes and models of these devices. Today, Polycom and Yealink are exclusive to what we will offer. But if you're a historical customer, you may even have some Astra devices attached to your Finality system. All of these we support, that, and we will help you configure them in a way that you can place and receive calls, call extension to extension, update features from your user panel, and so on. Today, the purpose of this, uh, this webinar is to go over these five major points. How to identify your IP phone correctly proper cabling procedure, confirm network connectivity to the device, setting the boot server to download all the settings that you set up from the control panel, and configure a local phone to be a remote phone. The most basic of all of these steps is how to properly identify your device. This is very important when it comes to contacting support, whether it's a ticket or, uh, through your control panel, if it's a live chat with one of our chat representatives, or a live phone call with one of our technical support engineers. The make, model, and address, uh, MAC address of these devices is how we can locate and effectively troubleshoot your device. Every make and model has a different process or will have uh, certain fields located in certain areas. The MAC address is the unique identifier. No other phone in the world will have that MAC address. So that's how we could locate you in databases, backend files, or any other way that we need to confirm settings with this device. So the make, model, and MAC address can be identified by just simply flipping the device over. There's typically a make st maker sticker on the back. Um, if you look at this example, I flipped over my Yalink device, snapped a quick photo, you'll see that the make is a Yalink, the model is an SIP-T20P, and the MAC address is that unique identifier down there on the barcode that says MAC. Those three pieces of information are critical when troubleshooting your device. When it comes to properly cabling your device, on the back, pretty much every phone is the same, minus the PC port. Some devices don't have the PC port, but most of the devices made in the last 10 years will. So looking at this, you've got a power adapter plug input, you've got a local area network input, you've got a PC input, and then you've got a fourth one for your handset input. There could be additional ones, whether there's a headset input or other specialized jacks on, on more advanced models. But for all intents and purposes, these four ports are how we ca uh, cable up your phone. Power goes into the DC plug. You've got your LAN port. This is where you're gonna plug in that Cat5 cable, the big fat looking phone cord, into the LAN port that goes into your network. So that port is gonna go from the phone into your switches or routing equipment to give the network connectivity to the phone. The PC port is a pass-through port. You could think of it as an output port. So you will, this is if you only have one network port available and you need to use that for your computer. Well, you could plug your phone into the network port and then plug your PC into the back of the phone through the PC port, and it will pass network connectivity like a switch over to your computer, whether it be a laptop or, or any other device. The handset is a smaller jack. You'll notice that it only fits the very small RJ11 connection, which is basically that squiggly phone cord that goes to your handset. So that's where you'll plug in your handset when you first unbox your phone. Easy enough, right? So now we're, we've, we've got the make model MAC address of our device. We've got it cabled up correctly. Let's verify that now that this phone is powered up, if we're getting an IP address on your local network. 
To do this, the two main makes uh, of phones that we're seeing out in the field today are Polycoms and Yanlinks. On the device itself, there's a hard button or a physical button that says Menu. If you click Menu, Status, Network, IP Address, which are key presses where you push the Menu button, then you press 2, 2, and then 1. It'll, it'll display to you what the IP address is of your local network connection for that phone. On a Yalink, it's, it, there's a few less steps. You really just hit the menu button and then hit the first option, which is status, and it will display you the IP address. It's going to look a lot like this. This is the address of this phone inside of your network so that you can log into it and troubleshoot it. setting the boot server. The boot server is where we're going to tell this device to reach out and go get all of its files, whether it be firmware files, boot ROMs, configuration files, directories, dial plans, anything that you set up through the CP that this phone needs to know to place and receive phone calls or configure it for a specific extension through the extensions page in the control panel, this is how we tell that phone where to find all of these files. Finality phones will come pre-provisioned when you purchase them from Finality. However, there's a very limited battery inside of these devices. If they sit in a box for a period of time, a week, two weeks, a couple days, I mean, it's kind of hit or miss on how exactly it happens the pre-provisioned settings may actually default. It, it, may, it may lose them. But that's not the end of the world because we're going to show you how to set up that boot server so that once you reboot the phone, it will be able to hit your system, grab all of its configuration files, and update itself so that you could start using that device inside of your network. How do we set up the boot server? There's two ways. There's physically on the phone. You can press menu, you can go into admin settings, advanced, you can put in the password, you can run through all of the different uh, network menus and set the boot server there. I think it's very complicated. It's, it's, it's hard to type a URL or a web address because you have to do it one key at a time and it's, it's almost like uh, back in the old school days of texting, right? Before we all had keyboards, um, you know, you have to press one key multiple times, you have to find star, changing from numbers to letters can be extremely difficult with the pound symbol, sometimes it's a little confusing. Much, much easier using your web browser logging into the phone. So let's see how we do that. Remember the IP address that we confirmed earlier? Well, we're going to use that IP address to utilize your web browser to log into this phone. Inside of my network, my test phone is on 10, 10, 13, 162. I confirmed that by going into the menu, looking at the status, grabbed the IP, plugged it right here into my web browser, and hit enter. It's going to pop up with a username and password field so that it is secured. If you do not have this information, please contact support. Um, you can use a ticket, live chat, or call, and we'll supply you the username and password for the makes of your phone. So Polycom has a unique one, Astra has a unique one, Yellinks have a unique one. The reason we're not publishing them here is we do not want them out there on the web for just anybody to see. So please, if you need this information, go ahead and contact us. We'll, we'll supply it for you. Um, just let us know how many different makes that you have. If you're all Yalinks, we'll just give you the one login. If you have more, we'll supply you with those as well. Let's go ahead and get logged in. We'll put in the username and password for your device and hit enter. Now you're in the web interface for your phone. You'll see that it's much easier to navigate here, to type, to, to select different fields than it is to configure the menus from your phone itself. Um, there are instances where you'll have to do that, but this is definitely the preferred way. To set the boot server, you're gonna, and, and this one is specific to a Yalink phone, all of these devices, if you type in your make and model into help.finality.com, will show you 
checklist style troubleshooting to do these very steps that we're going over right now. Um, starts at step one, goes all the way to step 16. By the time you're done, you should be ready to go. In particular, yeah, links are our newest provider, so people are less familiar with them, so now I'm going to use those in these examples. But there's definitely help articles on help.finality.com that cover the Polycom and Astra and Grandstream and a lot of other phones out there. On a Yalink phone, we log in with our username password, we click on the Upgrade tab. It's a little sneaky, but at the top there where you see number two, there's a Basic or Advanced menu. We're going to go to the advanced menu, otherwise none of these settings will show. Once you do that, the real important fields here are the three fields named provisioning server, username, and password. Those are the three things that we have to fill in before we click that auto provision button down there to provision this phone with its configurations on the server. Where do we find this information? It's actually located in your control panel. So when we're looking for these three fields that are required, they're all unique per your server ID. We're going to go ahead and go over to your, your admin panel right here. So now I'm in my finality control panel, logged in as the administrator. I'm going to go over to the options tab in the control panel. I'm going to click settings. These are all your default global server settings. The phone settings section, if you expand it, will show you a field called FTP connection information. There'll be a little hyperlink that says show. You click that hyperlink, you're going to see a box pop out, just like the one at the bottom of this screen. It's going to tell you three pieces of information. The server address of what you want to connect to. The FTP username for your account and the password for your account. What you're going to find out is the server address is going to be ftp.pbextra.com. The username is actually your server ID. Whatever your server ID is, whether it's uh, four, five, or six digits, should be your user account. And then your password is unique you can copy paste it right out of this screen. Take a screenshot of this screen, take a, um, write it down on a post-it, save it on your computer, do it wherever you like to do it, but those are the three pieces of information we need to go back to that step and get this phone provisioned. So let's go ahead and shoot back over to our screen here. We're back into the upgrade advanced, I guess, page. So you'll see that provisioning server, I set it up as the FTP protocol, so FTP colon forward slash forward slash FTP.pbextra.com. The username will be your FTP user that we just saw. So it'll be your server ID. The password is your unique encrypted password that you got out of the CP just moments ago. As soon as you fill in those three fields, you'll be able to click down in the screenshot here where, there, where you see the number four with the auto provision button. When you click auto provision on a Yadlink yeah phone, it is going to run some configuration files. It's going to lock in some settings and it's going to reboot the device. If everything is set up correctly, the phone will reboot grab all of its configs and come online like a charm as soon as it's done booting. On a Polycom, it's pretty similar. You would go to, you would log into the phone using your, your web IP address. You would have to put in the Polycom specific username and password to log into the GUI of the, of the Polycom phone. Then you could actually run through and set the boot server there as well. Uh, same deal, ftp.pbextra.com your username and password. On a, yeah, or on a Polycom, you'll actually have to physically reboot it, but not a big deal. Um, once you save it, sometimes it'll reboot automatically. So that is how you provision your phone. If for some reason your phone comes with no settings, this is how we get it all set up based on the settings that you've configured in your control panel on the finality side. It should update the extension, the username, 
should know uh, what its voicemail mailbox address is and all of the settings that you configure from the extensions page inside of your control panel. That way you don't have to go through and set these devices up one by one. Pretty cool, right? The final step. And this, you know, there's a bit more to this. We're going to touch on the very basics, but the basics of taking a device home, right? I'm in the office. I know I'm going to be uh, working remotely for a week. You could take your phone from in the diagrams below from the left side here where all the phones are local inside of the same building connecting to the server that way to taking it home. This doesn't matter when you're in our hosted environment. If we're hosting your service, you're always a remote user, right? There's no server that you have in the office that you're connecting to physically. So you're actually coming from anywhere in the world, connecting to our data centers. You will not have to worry about this. This is for people that have their own PBX systems located inside of their office that all of these phones are connecting to. So remember, if you're hosted, you can always connect a phone by simply just putting in the URL to connect. Either options are going to go to the same place. But when you're hosting your own server, we have to do a little bit of changing here. Notice the address here on the accounts page. It says S server ID dot pbextra dot finality dot com with the port 5060 that is the local address so the DNS name for your local server will be s server ID dot pbextra dot finality dot com that equals your LAN IP down there in the red which will be something like 192.168 or 10 dot you know, 0 .0 0 0.0.1. However, th those only work internally or local to the server when you're in the same network behind the same router. If you're connecting externally from outside in the world into your network, you actually have to tell it to use the local or the WAN IP, which is the publicly routable IP. You know, it's gonna, it's not gonna know how to find 192.168.1.101. But the 11.143.5.122, or whatever your WAN IP is, it connects through you adding an X at right after the uh, the server ID in the in the URL right there. So if you look at the screen down below, note the difference between the red and the green options. The red option has no X. That is the local URL for this device. Note the green one below. All we did was add an X after, right before the pbextra.finality.com. This tells it to use the external address, which is how we're going to connect from outside in the world. So by adding that X, hitting apply to the settings, and then rebooting the device, as long as our network is set up correctly, because over here on the left, we're going to have to allow connections over port 5060, this phone will register without any hiccups. You'll be able to utilize it from your home office simply by adding the X to the account um, of this phone for the registration server. I should touch on it really quick. Not the, not the upgrade advanced, you know, not where we set the boot server, but the actual SIP account right up here on the account tab, we can just update that one field. You won't have to re-download your configuration files, right? You'll, you'll just have to simply tell it where to go to register to the server so that you could utilize the phone. Just wanted to touch on that really quick. So to recap, hopefully today you feel a little bit better about how to properly identify your IP phone to a technical support specialist when you're talking to them. It really speeds up the process in troubleshooting uh, a, a, a troublesome device. Uh, by knowing what make, model, and your MAC address is, we should be able to identify the proper steps to guide you through getting that device back online and getting you back to work. Proper cabling of your device, the power, the ethernet cables, 
the switch functionality where you can plug in a computer and tether it through the phone to get an extra port if you only have a single drop in your office or cubicle or home office and also uh, the headset connection which is that smaller cable so that you have that squiggly cord going to your handset confirm your network connectivity are you getting an IP address is the phone even having a chance to register so uh, by hitting the menu status option you can look and verify what the IP address is of that phone so that we can log in and do some troubleshooting if you don't have an IP address then we're having a network problem and that's a whole different set of uh, troubleshooting steps so you could see why though why that one's pretty important uh, setting the boot server to get those configuration files, firmware files, dial plans, whatever it is that we set up through the control panel to get that device that has never talked to your server before to get it to download its most current information. We set that boot server on the accounts or on the uh, on the advanced page of the upgrade section. That way, when you reboot it, goes back to the server, re-downloads all of its files. All your changes that you've made in the control panel should be reflected upon it, the phone rebooting and registering up to your server. And then lastly, connecting a remote user uh, by taking your device home, simply add an X to the SIP account page right after your server ID to tell it not to use the local network address, but to use the, the wide area network or the external address. Hopefully we feel better about what we just went through. <laughs> I know um, there, the next week we're going to be doing some uh, VoIP networking 101. Very important stuff. I highly recommend everybody who operates an IP phone to, to attend that one because it, it. hopefully I can demystify a few things or um, maybe expand some knowledge that you already have some base understanding of or at least expose you to some stuff that you've never considered when setting up an internet phone system in your office. My name is David again. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and I hope you join us every Friday at 11 a.m. for our continuing fundamental learning webinar series. It's been a pleasure uh, spending some time with all of you and if you would like we could switch over to answering some questions. Just go ahead and type them in on the questions box on your go to webinars, uh, what do you call it, user panel. And uh, myself and Sergio will go ahead and answer all your questions for you. That's actually a great question. Uh, one of our folks typed in. Can I use my HUD remotely? Um, what I'm guessing is, is that this user uses their HUD connectivity while inside of the office and they've got their phone hooked up, they've got their computer running HUD. Can they use HUD from home? The answer is absolutely. There's a little bit of networking involved. Um, there's a very specific port that needs to be open on the router where we're connecting to. Once again, hosted customers, you're always remote. There's nothing local you're connecting to. You're connecting to us in the cloud. Those ports are wide open. You should have absolutely no problems if you run HUD from a laptop to take your, device, your, your laptop home and utilize HUD. The one thing you should know, HUD is not a phone. HUD is an interface, an interaction between Finality and your IP phone. So if you take your HUD, if you take your computer with HUD to your home, you can log in, you can chat, you can view calls, you can look at queues, you can you can do everything you can do in HUD, but you need to have a phone registered where you are if you want to actually pass calls to it. Otherwise, it's going to try to send the call to the phone that is that you, you traditionally use. Um, so if I just take HUD home, I could do all the functionality of HUD, but it doesn't, once again, it's not a phone, not today. Um, we, we're currently in development of an of a internet-based HUD product that is going to uh, include a soft phone. 
in that case, you wouldn't need to physically take a phone to your home, but that you will have a phone built into the HUD interface. So it's actually really cool. Uh, we're really excited about that, and we're not too far out from it. So keep an eye out for our web-based HUD product. However, today, <laughs> you will need something to actually place and receive a call on. All right, anyone else got any questions? All right, thank you guys. I, I hope you had a wonderful experience. Please join us next week for VoIP Networking 101, and we'll see you then. Have a great day.